going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom and Eric Sheet Tabor. We are going to be talking through this week's golf slate. Uh, I have literally have I've, I've barely taken a look. I've just familiarized myself in the last 10 minutes. I'm going to try and pull his sheets. What he did last week, he he said all this stuff and how he wasn't, you know, he didn't know if he was going to play and everything. And then I'll throw something together. And of course, he ends up coming in second, although it looked like he was pretty much a sure thing to win. Um, so hopefully I'm, I'm going to do the same thing this week, Sheets. Talk a little bit about your last week and then we'll jump into this slate. Yeah, I mean, I basically just screwed around and, and came up with a couple of things and I had a, I had a, I had a lineup at a single entry, which by the way, you shouldn't do. I had a lineup at a single entry that had two got two slots taken up by sub 1% owned guys. <laughs> wow. You really don't need, uh, yep. but uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, I had an insurmountable lead going into Sunday. I had a 50 point lead and I, was, I think I was the only one in the whole tournament that was six for six, <laughs> if you want to know the truth. And uh, I, I still lost. Um, I got second like by like two points. It was, I think I'm, I, I, Honestly, I was about 97% to win going into Sunday. Nonetheless, uh, this week, um, this week we're going to answer the, answer the question, like how, what, how weak of a field do you need before John Rahm actually wins? Um, because we play John Rahm in impossible fields as chalk every single week with this idea that he's just the number one player in the world. How am I not playing? He's the number one player in the world. I'm not playing. Now he's not the number one player in the world. I'm going to and, pull back as we played him as chalk. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't any more owned than anybody else at the top tier in any of those. Right. Games. But what I'm just saying is that is that is that um, it, he's always looks like a great play, and he just hasn't gotten there like in a long time. So right. uh, let's let's let us let us see if if when he projects like four thousand points better than the rest of the field. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see if he just can't get it done. Let's how about how about get a win, Rob? That would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice. Um, obviously, he's significantly better than everybody else in this field. Um, I don't think there's anybody even in the same ballpark. Nope. <laughs> so, uh, t- I mean, look, if you play any, I don't know what to do with this one because I, I, I don't like playing 35 to 40 percent owned golfers. However, if someone is much better and it's hard for me to picture them finishing outside of the top five, it's really hard for me to not want to play him. So what are you going to do, Sheets? I, I can't I can't figure out what I, I want. I mean, he play. projects way too well. I'm just probably I'm going to probably end up locking him in. I mean, that's probably what's going to end up happening. And 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 then and like I said, I'm not allowed to whine. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, fair enough. I'm just not allowed to whine. It's it's I have I can't just just say. I'm just fading wrong because I should have the last 10 times. You know what I mean? Like that, right, mean right, right. That, 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 that logic is terrible. But actually, I, I don't even agree that you should have. I mean, I think he was on most of the winning line. I mean, he was always finishing the top 10. It wasn't like he was having horrible tournaments. Right. right. So, so I, you don't need to get a win, but I just, it's hard for me to see him outside the top five, like I said. And it's just, I don't know. I mean, even, even as he struggles and has his worst, you know, period on tour that he's had, what is the worst he's finished? Like he had the one right. fifth. Other than that, he was what 17, 21, 10, 3, 14, 2. Like it wasn't like he's been out there just horrible. So I, I I'm sort of with you. I guess I probably will play him. Um, all right. So Rom, and then who else are, who else are you looking at above the, the 10k range? Well, I, I like I like Fee now and I like answer. Um, but I don't I don't like the other guys over 10 k yeah. But what am I gonna do? You know, like you gotta spend money somewhere, I guess. You know what I mean? I either go real, I, I either go cheapo, cheapo, right? Which I know. Listen, it's so funny because you say, you know, dude, you, you think that you that these guys never get there, and I know you don't like to play these sub six, seven k guys, but in every week there's like something like that. And last week for me, that's what I did. Yeah, <laughs> I played, I played the, the 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 top guys paid up, and then I played these guys I never heard of under seven k, and that's what that's what got me there. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, sure, you could try it. You could try Rom and Fee now, and just hope you can get it. You know, get it in there, or Rom and Answer. Um, you have any preference, just at least on just just instinct between like Fee now and Answer? Uh, answer would be my preference, but I'm not particularly either interested in either of them. Um, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll skip down to the next range uh, for where guys I'll actually play will be. Um, in that range, in the in the 9K range, I think that. Uh, uh, I'm looking at Tringale partly because of the ownership and I want Chris Kirk, uh, who I like the best in this range. And I'm okay. I, I like Aaron wise. I'm not crazy about the ownership on Aaron wise. So 
those are the guys who stood out to me the most. How about you? Yeah, I got a couple. So uh, Chris Kirk always looks good and he always gets owned. Um, and he always gets owned more than I think he's going to get. So I'm not going to fall for that again. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to look and say, oh, he's only 14%. He's told me 20, 25% by the end of this. Um, uh, maybe, maybe not. But but the other one who always gets owned is, is the guy you mentioned, is Aaron Wise. So Kirk and Wise are the two chalky 99, 9500s, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I and, th- and then the next guy I have listed is the next chalkiest, which would be Kerry Woodland, right, at 9900. But what I'm willing to do, and again, to, to stay off brand, but get, to get back on brand, um, I will go back to bad attitude, Kevin Streelman at 9,100. Mm-hmm. Um, he's probably my favorite in this range, given ownership, given everything else. Um, and then as a pivot, if Kirk and Wise are going to be popular, I will play my man. I will play my Tringali. Um and he always kind of gets owned too, <laughs> but but they can't own all these guys, I don't think. Um, and my my look right now has Tringali on less than both Kirk and Wise. So yep. Um, I guess in summary, my favorite GPP play in this range is Strelman. Um, but all those guys look pretty good. Yeah, I, I just I, I don't really see why these guys are priced more than the 8K guys are. <laughs> I just I just but you know what I was I was gonna lead with that, but then we kind of I kind of got distracted. What's kind of cool about these these types of tournaments where you don't have the full field of the best players is you get pricing anomalies like that. Like you get these guys, yep. some of these guys get this get this big bump, right, in pricing, and some of them just don't. You know what I mean? Like, like, like who's to say that Chris Kirk, for example should be 500 more than Kevin Streelman. You know what I mean? I don't know. Um, or take a guy like, I don't know, what's a, what's a, what's a better example of this? There's like these 70, these, these guys are just much cheaper that should be getting a bump that aren't. And these guys that are normally like $7,700 guys are now all of a sudden like 9,700. Like why is CT Pan not a little bit closer to these guys? I, I guess. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Um... That, that's exactly why well, or more i mean like why is carlos ortiz in mexico right these guys? right right perfect good idea yeah so so i i'm i'm just gonna yeah. I'm, I'm more into this range too and they're just gonna be lower owned so i i like davis riley i like carlos ortiz and i like um lento griffin a little bit that's oh and, and tagala those are my guys who i'll be using how about you i i've got considered aaron rye but I, I don't think i'm gonna do it what do you got in the 8K sheets? Yeah. You guys know who I have in the 8K. Oh, we didn't lift, we didn't pull your screen up. We were really sloppy this morning. I've, I've been the really worst. Sloppy. I've been the so worst. off this morning. It's my fault. You are just the worst. But hold on. Let me uh it's it's totally my fault. It's it... but you know, there's not much to show when I'm sharing the screen. Right? Yeah, no, I know. It's just it gives a visual, but yeah, you're right. We're just talking through it. We just and it also just like just gives that look that we have. No preparation, no idea what we're doing, but we'll, we'll, we'll catch you the winners. How about that? Um, okay, so so to summarize, we like we like so far we like Rom at the top, right? You like the answer a little bit better than than I like the answer, yeah. Um, but nothing, but not, not the, the range itself, not that great. Um, nine yeah. K, I identified Streelman as kind of my best GPP play, and we'll get back to this or whatever. I'm just kind of just put put putting some guys in here, and you mentioned the gala as the eight K. Um, and you mentioned him as part of our 9K range, as part of our theme of, of being just disorganized. So back back, back to the 8K range. Um, no, no, no. I meant the, I, I mentioned Thigala in the 8K range. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm even disorganized about the, disor- the, the, the disorganization. That's how bad I am. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like uh, I like Charles Howell III because I haven't lost enough on him yet. Um, uh, so I'm going to play him at sub 10%. He is. He was eighty. He was eighty four hundred against much better guys. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, and he's my favorite. And then I got the aforementioned CT Pan at eighty one hundred. He's showing up as an all right play. Mark Hubbard showing up as a good play. Taylor Moore showing up as a good play. And these guys are all sub ten percent. Um, so those are my four eight K guys, and all of them are sub ten percent. So I think I agree with you that the nine Ks as chalk are going to be ones that I probably avoid and maybe place a couple of these multiple 8K guys mm-hmm. along with Rom. And that's the way I can probably get different on this. Mm-hmm. 
it makes a lot of sense. Um, all right, let's get into the seven Ks real quick. Um, the the guys who stand out for me are Smotherman, uh, Smalley, Svensson. That's a lot of S's. I know, just uh, just all together. Um, those are the guys. Those are my favorites. Um, don't have uh, any other strong takes down here. What are you looking at? So what was it, Smalley? Smalley, Smotherman, and, and Svensson. Yeah, I'll throw a fourth. Okay. And, and Stallings. Oh, okay. There you go. Stallings as well. Okay. I got the four S's. We got, we got, we, let's, let's, let's put this. Here. So we got, yeah. we got Stallings, Smotherman, Svensson, and who was the other one? Smotherman, Stallings, Svensson, and Smalley. We said Smalley twice. Smalley, Smotherman, Svensson, and Stallings, right? Okay. All right. Hold on. Okay. Okay. By the way, Smotherman, he, the guy who had Smotherman got me at the end in the in the single entry. Oh. And Smotherman didn't even make the cut. <laughs> so, oh, <damn. laughs> um, so those four got all, all those four seven Ks, they all make sense to me. Um, Stallings is my favorite. Okay. And then my next one is oh my god. So wait, hold on. My next one is is Taylor, but the guy underneath that is another S. And there's just no way I can't do this. Okay. So we got we haven't played this guy in a while, but the F the the oh you once aforementioned Chase Seifert is showing up in our lives again in my board. Yeah. So Seifert, Stalling, Smalley, Smotherman, Spencer. Okay. <laughs> um, now that that leaves fourteen hundred on the table, so I'm not probably going to do that. But I like I like all those guys. And then what would a day be without Emmanuel Emiliano Grillo at seventy two hundred? So yeah. this this is you know what this is gonna shape up to be a fun thing. And you could totally play wrong. And 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 you know what's gonna happen. Grillo's winning, all the S's are coming in second through sixth, and Rom is missing the cut. Like that's obviously that's obviously what's gonna happen. But um, but the point is is that is that even with the chalky Rom, you could you could you could fade these nine K's and, and really have some fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you're right. Um, all right, let's let's get down. What is what is in the six Ks, if anything, that you're that you're looking at? Uh, yeah, I got a couple. Um, Dylan Wu, actually, first one is the one who always shows up is Ryan Armour, yeah. and then Dylan Wu, and then Lee Hodges, and then Hank Leboy. Yeah. Um... I'm okay with, with, with all of that, whatever I, I I've got a uh, Richie Wierinski who I hate as a human being as a, as a human being. Yeah. I go, I'm going past golf here, but I, but man, I, oh man, we are after it today. I just don't like uh, some of the things he said uh, to, last year. Anyway, um, Patrick Flavin, who uh, I was just recently introduced to uh, was oh, really? as, I did, as I did my five minutes of research on this, on this tour, on this uh, tournament. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's actually like been like, he's look, he's, he's, he's had three PGA tour starts. He came in what 17th, 22nd and 54th, uh, 6,500 certainly seems reasonable in a weak field. Uh, I don't mind the Leviota thing. Uh, Vince Whaley was the only other one that, uh, that I had to add. Uh, Ryan Armour didn't mind either. I, I think if you're going to play guys like John Huh, maybe this is a good week to do it because it's such a horrible field. Uh, oh, I oh I forgot one guy in the seven K range though, and that was Joseph Bramlett, who I do like. That guy can hit it. Yep. Um, I'm still waiting for him to his his career to take off, but uh, I, I'm going to keep back and betting on that guy. So that's what I got. What do you got, Sheets down here? I'm sorry. What, 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 okay. Oh, so what do you got for the game? Sorry. Uh, okay. So uh, aside from Rom, who's going to win the tournament? How about that? Answer for me then. And I will go feed. Okay. Um, under 10k to top five sheets all right so top five of these guys um look the nine kgs are better than the eight, eights and seven so I, i'm gonna pick one of these guys but to get top five i don't think i can go with streelman for top you know but but none of these guys are locked for top five yeah i guess wood woodland maybe it's got the best shot yeah i say woodland has the best shot of those for top five i will say munoz i think he has the best shot um so okay, I'm gonna go Munoz. Um, under nine K sheets, who's your guy? Ten top ten. Um, 
Charles Howell the third. Your favorite guy. You love this guy. <laughs> favorite guy um, who's never never done a thing. I'm I'm sticking because I've only picked the, the Mexican golfer so far. So I will go continue with that and I'll go with Carlos Ortiz. Yeah. Under 8K. Um I will go with the my highest rated guy who is not over 10%. And that would be uh Scott Stones. You don't think he's going to be over ten percent, huh? I think you might. I, well, I have him at nine point three percent. Well, I have at nine point two percent. Adam Svensson, who I love. There it is. Okay, very good. See, my, that's the thing. Mine's way too choppy. Mine's nine point okay. three. Yours is nine point two. Right. But um, once when you play yours, then you'll be more choppier than me. See, I know. I, mean. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> um, what do you? What about the under seven Ks to make the cut? Armor, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. I I'm going to go for Patrick Flavin. <laughs> All right. So, so here's it. So over nine K, which of these chalk guys are you going to pick to not make the cut? Um, oof. Uh, I, ugh. Woodland. That is probably the correct answer. You think so? I'm gonna, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go with another kind of volatile guy. I'll go with Aaron Watts. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That makes sense. All right, so there you have it, guys. We just wanted to get something out to you for the for the golf uh, sheets. Any any other things before we get out of here? No, nah, one of us is winning for sure. All right, good luck to everybody, and uh, hopefully, if we don't take it down, seriously, you, you guys are all playing for third this week. I'm sorry if you guys want to play. I hope third place is good enough because Bobby and I are hundred percent running one two. Because as you know, with golf, your success is inversely re inversely related to how much effort you put in to the pre so uh, uh, preparation. Yeah, exactly. I spent like literally 25 hours on the Masters and got, I, I never <laughs> and had I'm it. still waiting for my first cash from that one. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck, everybody.